Hi everyone, welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. In this video, we're going to learn the two to four player game, Lagoon, Land of Druids by Three Hairs Games. Here, players control powerful druids in Lagoon, a world of wondrous magic and creatures whose three primary energies have become unbalanced and now vie for the destiny of the planet. So players will explore and unravel various regions to change the balance and align themselves with the energy that ultimately claims the destiny of Lagoon. So join me at the table and let's learn how to play. The game comes with 27 double-sided tiles, and we'll go over these in more detail later, but for now, notice that each side is aligned with one of the three energy types, yellow, red, and blue. This is signified by the colored border here, as well as the symbol shown on the far left-hand side. Along with their specific energy, some will have a green background in this area, and that indicates that they are a special haven tile. All of the tiles are numbered from 1 to 27 and have an A and a B side. They also belong to one of the three tile groups, 1, 2, or 3. When playing a regular game, choose any 24 of the tiles, but ensure that you have an equal number from each of the three groups. For your first game, you can keep it simple and simply take the tiles numbered 1 to 24 and return the rest to the box. For a shorter game, remove one from each group, or for a longer game, include all 27 tiles. You begin the game with three tiles in play. You can choose any ones you want as long as there's one from each of the three energy types and that one of them is a haven. It's also recommended that each one comes from one of the three different tile groups. The remaining tiles you shuffle and then place inside of the large draw bag. If it's your first game and you're not really sure what tiles to start with, don't worry. The rule book offers a couple of suggestions like these three. And when placed on the table, ensure that each starting tile is touching each other tile. Now each player chooses a set of druids. Although the game is for up to four players, there are eight unique options to choose from, so pick the one that you like the best. These tokens will represent your druids. You will have four acolytes and one larger elder druid, also known as an eldred. It also has a star symbol to help distinguish it. And each of these tokens have a refreshed and exhausted side. You'll also have a player marker in your chosen color. Each player now places their Eldred and one Acolyte refreshed side up onto the Haven tile. Make sure that each player has one of the player reference sheets, and then finally place all of the seed tokens of all the energies in the play area within reach of all the players. I would like to mention, you will find these tokens in your copy of the game as well. The publisher had extra space on the punch board to include more tokens, so rather than waste it, he created these pieces, which may serve a purpose in the future, but for now, you can ignore them. And that's the setup. In Lagoon, each tile is going to bring power to one of the three energies. So at the beginning of the game, everything is in perfect balance, but as players explore and add new tiles from the bag to the play area, the balance of power is going to shift. So the object of the game is to guide the ultimate destiny of Lagoon towards one of the energies that supports the seed tokens and tiles that you have collected. The game is played over a series of rounds, starting with the player who most recently visited a forest. On your turn, you complete four steps, and then play goes to the next player. And that will continue until the turn in which a player has taken and explored the last tile in the bag, then scores are calculated. To start, you begin your turn with the begin step. If you have a druid on a site with an effect that resolves during the begin step, you may choose to resolve it now. Keep in mind, your druid does not have to be refreshed. It can even be exhausted and you still have access to this ability. The symbol shown here reminds you that the effect is time-based, not necessarily only at the beginning of your turn. Some resolve at the end or even during gameplay. But the symbol does act as a reminder to check here, like during the begin step, to see if you have an ability that you can activate. If you have more than one ability that can resolve during the begin step, you choose the order that they're resolved in. And we'll talk more about these abilities a little bit later. But next, is the refresh step. 
First, turn your player marker to the refreshed side. Then choose up to three of your druids to flip from their exhausted sides back over to their refreshed side. Now, of course, you start the game with two refreshed druids and your player marker, but I wanted to show you how this step will be important later on when you have brought more druids into play and several of them are exhausted. The third step is the action step. There are three innate actions available to all druids. When you want to take one of these actions, you have to invoke the druid, and that's just a shorthand way of saying flip it from its refreshed side over to its exhausted side. So a druid that is already exhausted can't take any additional actions. Let's start by explaining the moving action. To move a druid, exhaust it, and then move it to any adjacent site. To summon a druid, flip one of your refreshed druids, and then take any other druid from your supply and place it on any haven exhausted side up. So just to be clear, let's say that this druid was not exhausted and we had another haven here. I could use the summoning action with this druid and then place a new druid either on this haven or on this haven. To use the explore action, choose a refreshed druid to exhaust. Then draw a random site tile from the bag. Each site has two sides. So look at both and choose the side that you want to bring into play. When placing your new site, it must go in an empty space adjacent to the site where your druid was exploring. I think I'll put it over here. You may then choose, if you want, to move your exploring druid to the new location. This free move can only be taken when using a basic explore action as just shown. You don't get this free movement when a site tiles effect, like on Roots of Creation, adds new tiles to Lagoon. In this situation, the Eldred would not be able to choose to move to this new tile. Regardless of whether or not your exploring druid travels to the new location, if the site shows this exploration action symbol, then you may choose to activate this one-time effect right now. Keep in mind, exploration actions like this may not be used at any other time. For example, this one says, when exploring this site, you may exhaust your Eldred. That's this druid right here. If you do, summon one of your druids exhausted to any site. So I might place my new druid right here. You may only use a basic explore action once per turn. So you exhaust your player marker to remind you that you've taken this action. And finally, you collect a seed that matches the symbol of the newly explored site. Seeds can provide you with victory points at the end of the game or be used during the gameplay for other effects. Along with the three basic actions, there are also site actions you may conduct which will show one of two different symbols. This symbol means that any refreshed druid can exhaust itself to activate this ability. Whereas this symbol means you must exhaust an Eldred in order to activate the special effect. Let me give you a quick example. Let's say that our Eldred here exhausted itself in order to summon a druid, which would get placed in a haven. Now I know I'd like to have this Eldred at this location at the beginning of my next turn in order to activate this ability. How can I do that? Well, I could use this site action by exhausting this druid, which allows me to refresh one druid. So I'll refresh this elder druid, and now I will exhaust my elder druid to move it to this location. I can't use the ability yet because I'm exhausted, but during the refresh step of my next turn, I'll be able to ready three of my druids. What's particularly interesting about actions found on tiles is that they're available to all of the druids of player controls. Let me change the tile layout here and I'll show you what I mean. Let's say in this situation, I'd really like to activate the ability here on the roots of creation. However, this requires an elder druid and my eldred is over here lounging in the hot springs of the Phoenix. It could take three turns just to move him here using the basic move action. However, I do have a druid on the seed spark heart. This says invoke to discard one seed. Move one of your druids to any site of that seed's energy. And look, I have a blue seed. And that means if I could invoke this location's ability, I would be able to move my Eldred immediately over to the roots of creation, which is also a blue site. But Rodney, you say, 
The druid you have at the Seed Spark Heart is already exhausted, so you can't use that ability. However, all of your druids are spiritually linked, and that means they have access to any of the sight abilities where your other druids are located. So that means this druid down here can also use the invoking powers of this site and this site because I have druids there. So I'm going to exhaust this druid to use this ability, discard this seed, and then move my Eldred immediately to the roots of creation. Now that you understand how abilities are shared among druids, let's look at this another way. With this setup, if I really want to invoke this site's ability, do I really need to move my elder druid at all? The answer is no, because the druid here gives the elder druid access to this ability. But remember, only the elder druid can actually invoke to activate this effect, because this symbol requires an elder druid. We wouldn't be able to simply flip this basic acolyte druid to invoke this effect. I also want to mention more than one player's druids may be on the same site, and they coexist peacefully and may both activate the abilities there on their turn. The final action you can take is unraveling, and this refers to actually removing locations from the playing area and adding them to your personal collection. Not only is this once again going to change the balance of power in Lagoon, but the sites you collect may also be worth points at the end of the game. In order to unravel a site, you must have a refreshed druid on the site that you wish to remove. However, if removing the site from the playing area would split the world into non-contiguous regions, then that site is locked and cannot be removed. A location like this could be removed and all of the other tiles stay connected. So we could make this a target of an unraveling. Additionally, you must have enough energy to unravel the site. The energies share a rock, paper, scissors styled relationship, which is shown here on your player marker, as well as on the player reference sheet. This shows us that yellow is required to unravel red, red to unravel blue, and blue to unravel yellow. And then you must have access to three units of the required energy to unravel the targeted site. Let's take a look here at the playing area as an example. Let's say that I wanted to unravel the Mani Temple. I have a refreshed druid here. It's a yellow site, and yellow means that three blue energy is required to unravel it. That means I need other druids on three unique blue locations. I do have three druids that are on blue locations, but not three different ones. So I would need to have one of the druids over here. The druids you count for this purpose do not all have to be refreshed. Let's say for a moment though, I only had access to two energy from my sites. As a last resort, I may spend seed tokens from my collection of the required type to make up the difference, returning them to the supply. So now I do have access to three blue energy. When unraveling a site, rather than exhausting the unraveling druid, you just return it back to your personal supply. If there are other druids on that site, exhaust them and then move them to the same or different havens that are currently in play. And as a tip, it's a good idea to ensure that when you place druids, you put them on the upper portions of the sites so you don't cover up the important text. Finally, you collect the unraveled site and add it to your personal collection. The sites you collect may be worth points at the end of the game. And I also want to point out that you cannot unravel a haven site if it's the last haven in play, and you're reminded of this at the bottom of all of the haven ability descriptions. Unlike exploring, you can unravel more than once during a turn, as long as you have the refreshed druid necessary to exhaust, and then the energy required to unravel the site you're targeting. And you can use the same druids you used before to supply you with that energy. So remember I had druids on the blue sites. I could use them again to unravel a second yellow site if I wanted. And don't forget, on the player reference sheet, all the different actions you can take are listed here as well, so you don't have to memorize them. But after the action step, it's time for the end step. If you have druids on sites with the timely action symbol that refer to the end step, you can resolve them now. And just like the begin step, you may resolve them in any order if you have access to more than one site with end step options. 
After the end step, the next player in clockwise order takes their turn and they resolve the same four steps. Begin, refresh, take actions, and end. You continue taking turns until someone uses the explore action to draw the final sight from the bag. They complete their turn as normal, but then the game is over and it's time to score. But before you can score, you need to determine the dominant energy. Now, I realize, of course, that the game's not over. There's still several tiles in the bag, but let's pretend it did end. You do not include sites that were unraveled and collected by the players, just the ones in the center of the table, and you count up and see which energy is most represented. So I have three blue tiles, two yellow, and one red. So blue is the dominant energy. Now, if there was a tie, let's say I had an extra yellow tile out here, so there's a tie between blue and yellow. You just refer to your player reference sheet in this power swirl, and break the tie that way. So blue beats yellow, that means blue is the dominant energy. If there was a three-way tie, so all of the energies are equally represented, well, then instead, you count up all of the seed tokens collected by the players, and whichever energy is most represented there, that's the dominant energy. And if there's a tie, you use the same power swirl to break the tie between the seed tokens. If there's a three-way tie between the seed tokens as well, then the game is a draw, but that is very, very, very unlikely. So now it's time to score, and the easiest way to do this is just to use the bottom of the reference sheet. Let's take a look. So here we see how to score our seed tokens and sites that were unraveled based on the destiny of Lagoon. So we said in this case that blue is the final destiny. So each seed token we have that's blue is going to give us one point. So looking at what we collected, we have four points here. These are worth nothing. The hex symbols here represent our site tiles. So it says that the yellow and red sites are worth two points each. So we have another four points here, and this site is worth nothing. Whoever has the most points wins, but if there's a tie, the tied players count the number of seeds they have in the dominant energy and subtract sites of the dominant energy that they unraveled. So in this case, if I was involved in the tiebreaker, I would recalculate my score as four points take away one for a total of three. If there's still a tie, then the tied players share the victory. And that's how you play Lagoon. Now, there are a couple of small concepts we haven't covered yet. Let's go back to the table and I'll just quickly go over them. If an effect refers to occupied sites, it means sites where there's at least one druid, whether refreshed or exhausted. So in this situation, all four of these sites are occupied and this one is unoccupied. And if an action instructs you to move or swap a tile, druids on those tiles travel with the sites that are being moved. We actually have a good example of both of those terms here on this tile. It says you can invoke a druid to swap the invoking druid's tile with any occupied site. Let's say I wanted to swap these two tiles. Remember, I can have this druid access this ability because one of its fellow druids is there. So I will exhaust this, and now these two sites can be swapped because this site is also occupied. Another term you may see is exile. When a druid is exiled, you just return it to its owning player's supply, and then that druid can be brought back out again in the future with a summoning action. Finally, some sites have italicized keywords, and these serve no purpose at this time, but expansions to Lagoon will change that. I should also mention the game has rules for solo play, but I'll leave that for you to discover on your own. When you're playing four player, you play in teams of two, and so you make sure you're seated between two of your opponents, but other than that, the game is played entirely the same, with teammates sharing nothing other than strategy, and at the end of the game, their seed and tiles for scoring purposes. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below, and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.